Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thanks so much for coming to our NYC 19 Google Certified Innovator Academy workshop. Let me know in the chat if you guys can hear me okay. Gotcha. Perfect. Google Certified Innovator Academy workshop. Let me know in the chat if you guys can hear me okay. Gotcha. Perfect. Google Certified Innovator Academy workshop. Let me know in the chat if you guys can hear me okay. Gotcha. Perfect. Google Certified Innovator Academy workshop. Okay, thanks everyone. I think we're all sorted with our deck here. Uh, this will be recorded today, so if you have to hop out in a bit, no worries, we'll send you this recording. But we'd love okay, to you all. everyone. We're all sorted with our deck here. Uh, this will be recorded today, so if you have Okay, I think we found the echo. Thanks, guys. Um, go ahead and introduce yourselves uh, in the chat if you can see our screen here. But let us know uh, where you're at, what your Twitter handle is, uh, what's your job role this year? Are you a teacher, a leader? Um, and then where do you get your best ideas? Today is not just a webinar, it's also a challenge workshop. So we are gonna be working today to help you think of what bothers you enough in your everyday life to uh, wanna change and transform education. So we'll let that come through in chat. Hi, Oscar, welcome. Hey, Alicia, great to have you. Hey, Les. <laughs> awesome. And we, we're joined today. We'll introduce our facilitators here in a moment. But all of our innovators on the call today will be in the chat and uh, helping you out with feedback as we help you hone in on what your challenge might be today. Awesome. Get those, uh, get those Twitter handles in there as well. Part of being a certified innovator is having a great, strong network of, and being an advocate uh, for changing education. So today is a really great time to build your personal learning network, make connections. So please do share that in the chat as it's coming through. Look at it fire up. Hey, Danielle. Hey, Ted. Hey, Michael. Hey, Frederick. Awesome. Hey, Anita. Looks like some tech integration specialists. Technology coach. Perfect. Keep those coming, everybody. Um, I'm just seeing Tammy says that where she gets her best ideas is from others. Awesome. Keep 
keep sharing in there where you get your best ideas. Um, we do have a Twitter prize tonight. So as you are having aha moments on the webinar or want to share what your challenge is, we encourage you to get it out there and get feedback. So you can tweet tonight with hashtag Google EI, the innovator hashtag. Um, and at the end of our workshop, we'll check through and we um, can pick a prize winner from our, our Twitter folks and see how many people you can follow. Awesome. Uh, before I introduce our facilitators today, um, I did ask everybody where you have your best ideas. Um, a lot of people when asked this actually say the shower. I'm looking in the chat to see if we had any shower people, but um, it looks like all over different places. And I think that is a good indicator that innovation uh, is a mindset and less our design coach today is gonna talk a bit about that, that you should always be innovating, always be thinking of challenges and always be thinking about how you might want to solve them. Great, uh, tonight we're gonna introduce the rest of our facilitators. Uh, we're also going to look at the agenda of the New York Academy and just review the basics on how you can apply, including level two certification, short answers, um, and touch briefly on um, the video submission. Uh, and then we're going to use a design thinking protocol to, to help you arrive at a challenge you really love, that you really want to spend a year working on. Um, and our facilitators will help us out with that. As a reminder, if you're interested in becoming a certified innovator, today we're talking about the New York Academy, um, October 2nd through 4th, but uh, there are many others that you can still apply to, but we'll focus on New York today, uh, and those applications are indeed due on August 2nd, so we have plenty of time. We'll be having another webinar in June to follow up with you on some of these initial challenges you come up with today. Um, a good idea is to bring up the certifiedinnovators.com website today, follow along with us in another tab, um, and press apply now and start your application because you can save it for later, which is really nice. You can preview what it looks like uh, and start thinking about how you wanna brainstorm what your application will be. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and introduce our design coach, Les Macbeth. Be sure to follow her at Les Macbeth from Future Design School and from our Mountain View 2016 cohort. Hey, Les, thanks for coming today. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to see all, everyone who's joined in tonight and uh, hear about your ideas you've got for your projects. Awesome. Thanks, Les. Um, we're also joined by a really stellar panel of innovators from all sorts of different cohorts. And all of these guys are really um, keen and interested on design thinking and helping um, create really good projects. Um, so I'll just go across the list. Hi, Theresa, do you wanna tell us uh, the city you're in, what you do now, um, what cohort you were in, and maybe a little bit about what your project was? Sure, and I'm guessing you guys can hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Hey guys, I'm Theresa Ham. Um, I'm currently a digital integration specialist in South Carolina, U.S. And um, what I'm up to or about my project, I was um, very passionate about keeping teachers, uh, of course, in the classroom. But we were seeing a barrier between what was happening in the college program versus going uh, into the school. So I came up with sweet tools and wrote college courses that would transition your uh, student teacher to their first year of teaching and then help them along second year. So basically like a three-year cohort uh, preparing them to stay in, stay in the world of, of teaching. Awesome. Thanks, Teresa. Be sure to follow her at Dr. T. Ham, um, and she'd be happy to help you out and uh, give you some feedback as well. Um, hey, Maggie, how are you? Did you want to introduce yourself to our viewers today? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so I am located just outside of Philadelphia, and I was with Les in the MTV16 cohort. Um, and my project was called Project Buoy, and it was the idea of kind of throwing a lifeline to really busy innovators and educators and helping them kind of find a community, a cohort to support them and tools to kind of stay balanced when you're in the midst of all of that stuff. Thanks, Maggie, I love the balance idea. Wonderful. Um, hey, Santi, how are you? you Wanna introduce yourself? Sure. What's up, everyone? My name is Santi Karasami. Uh, I live in New York City, so I, I hope to see everybody over here. Um, I was in the Washington, D.C. 17 cohort with my man Chris here, 
who will be introduced next. So my, my innovator project focused on this idea of uh, diversity and inclusion. Uh, so I actually established a uh, conference here in New York City that uh, invites teachers to have conversations about what does it mean to be um, sort of inclusive and focus on diverse learners. Um, so we had a successful conference and we're hoping to have it happen every year. Awesome, Santi. And what's like the number one thing? I know New York is so great, but your number one thing for people who might be traveling across the US, people can come from anywhere in the world and apply for New York or any of the other academies. But um, if someone's not um, an island local, what's what's your favorite part about Manhattan? Oh man, um, next to the food, because the food's amazing, I would say the energy, right? Nobody moves to New York to retire. People move here to, you know, part of my French, but like bust their ass, right? And like work hard, um, make connections. So when you come here, you really feel that in the city. So I, I would love to for people to experience that here in New York. Awesome, Santi, thanks so much. And yeah, the Google New York office where you would spend three days, everyone working on these challenges we're talking about today is actually a whole city block. So um, there's lots oh, yeah. of and lots of uh, a really inspiring place to be um, and work amongst the Googlers for a few days. So. Thanks, Santi. Let's talk to your partner in crime, Chris. How's it going, Chris? Uh, it's going great. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming today. Excited to hear you share a little bit about your project. Yeah. So um, my name is Chris Young, and uh, I am the strategic learning coordinator uh, for Southern Hancock Schools. It's in New Palestine, Indiana, um, which is uh, near Indianapolis. Anyways, uh, I was Washington, D.C., 17 uh, with Santi. We were even on the same team, and uh, Les. Um, was coach and was incredible. Um, I went to Innovator. My project was called The New Normal. Um, we, My district and just around the state, we'd been one-to-one -one, uh, with devices for some time. And I think uh, what I was noticing is our teachers were using the, the devices to, to sort of buy student engagement. And it was working for a period of time. And then all of a sudden, um, the devices were no more exciting than a textbook. Um, and so I went to Innovator hoping to solve that but through the help of design thinking and with less i really broke the problem down um and it it evolved um into a way to sort of measure measure student engagement um in real time and give the teacher feedback so that they can use that that feedback to inform their their instruction so um you know my biggest advice would be to take a problem that you are passionate about solving and um you know, just go deep with it, so. I love it, thanks so much, Chris. And what was your favorite uh, time in DC with uh, being with each other for three days? Uh, all of it, is that? <laughs> no, um, honestly, how, how the one thing about Google is, is they value people um, and just being around everyone and the passion uh, for their ideas for, for making education better. Um, I left inspired and I left a better educator. Um, and so, you know, the one thing I would say to anybody that was considering it, um, do it because it will change your life. Love it. Inspiring words from Chris. Thanks so much. Um, no we've problem. got Jen uh, from LAX here. Hey, Jen, how's it going? Hey. Hello, um, I'm a total noob. Um, I'm from LAX 18, so we're not quite at our one year point yet. Um, that'll be this summer. So uh, Les was one of the um, coaches at my academy and my innovator project is um, called Reset EDU. Oh, by the way, uh, Twitter handle on the deck there, not correct. Um, it's uh, Mrs. Lieben, M-R-S-L-E-B-A-N. Um, my innovator project is called Reset EDU, and it is actually manifested itself at present as a YouTube channel. And it's all about short little uh, webisodes to help teachers shift their thinking and kind of refresh or the name reset your teaching um, to help make things better and just small changes that teachers can make. Essentially, I would love to become the Gordon Ramsay of teaching. Yes, but not as mean. You're not as mean as Gordon, so you can't. Well, it depends. You never know. You have it coming. <laughs> Thanks. And yeah, I dropped uh, Jen's um, true Twitter handle. On Thank you. The chat. And, then, and Jen's been so great, um, even just coming from last July. But uh, 
doing so great at getting feedback quickly and setting strong goals. So it's been really cool to see how quickly um, everything's grown for you, Jen. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> or should I say Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, sweet. And Judy, sorry, your um, Twitter handle isn't right either, but yours is just Judy Blakeney. I'll drop that in. But okay, thank great. you, Judy. And tell us about you. So um, I'm a middle school teacher. I teach English and career technical education in Southern California, Orange County sandwich between LA and San Diego. Um, and my, um, I was in Sydney 17. My project was called, or is called, uh, Strength-Based EDU. And so I really focused a lot on how we can look at student strengths as well as teacher strengths to enhance the functioning of schools. Um, when I came in the to the program in Sydney, I was really focused on digital portfolios and students as the users and through the design thinking process that um, Les helped facilitate. I really understood that we needed to work with teachers first. So it came out of it with a change in the user um, to be more of a uh, professional learning um, and educational kind of process that I that I came up with. So, and I would say my number one way of learning and connecting with people is through Twitter. Um, at Judy Blakeney, um, and I do a lot of uh, Twitter chats and um, active with QChat as one of them, which is a weekly chat. And uh, so that's a little bit about me. Thanks, Judy. Thanks for sharing that. Um, awesome. And I don't think we have Christy on here, but she's a great design thinking resource too. So be sure to follow her at Christy D. Johns. Thanks, panelists. And um, thanks, chat, for going off here. Um, I see. Um, P.S. Myers, you asked about, has there been many STEAM projects? So I'm gonna drop in the chat here. This is the um, Google's Transformation Center. Uh, and so I'll go ahead and put this in. You can scroll through a lot. Um, you know, there's Maggie's right there, Project Buoy. So you can start to see what the final project is. And if you're getting a little freaked out that you don't have anything close to this yet, don't worry. Um, you'll see here when we discuss the agenda, you have plenty of time to get to this point, plenty of time to pivot change your project. Our goal is to just help you create something that's accessible and replicable for other educators around the world. Um, so take a peek at that just for some inspiration. Uh, and let's keep cruising so we can get to our challenge workshop. Uh, really here, I'm just going to quickly go through the steps, but you do have to become level two certified first. Um, and then you have to think of a challenge you're facing in the classroom. That's what we're going to do today. Next, you'll record a video about it and why you want to solve it. And then just apply by the deadline to one of these cities. So Sydney's is already closed, but you're eligible to apply to London if you'd like, or um, New York or Stockholm or Singapore even. Those are all of our English speaking academies this year. But we're gonna focus on challenge today. Um, so I'll keep cruising. Um, and uh, there's our Mountain View cohort here. I don't know if you can see, um, see our folks hiding in there on the call. But um, all of the panelists with us today are educational influencers who use technology to solve meaningful challenges in education. So that's what we're gonna help you out with today. And we do have over 1,700 innovators around the world, 53 countries, 45 cohorts, 12 years now. So you're joining a really um, awesome active group of collaborators, we hope, not just for the one year, but um, for the rest of your professional career. You do um, work on a project that's your keystone for the entire year, um, but then you'll also be a part of a broader community that helps you work on advocacy, leadership, and receive a mentor for a year to help you bring your project to the finish line. When you're at the agenda, uh, I'm sorry, when you're at the academy, um, you do spend a day networking and bonding and getting to know each other. Um, and then you'll hear inspirational sparks from Googlers and innovators. And then Les takes you through these hardcore design sprints to help you um, push these initial challenges into a project um, and leave with some sort of prototype that you wanna keep working on. Um, and then of course you'll graduate and get to net network and know the rest of the community. So those are our three days, our three long food filled days. Um, and I asked Chris already, but Facilitators, if you want to just drop in the chat, we'll keep cruising to get to our challenge workshop. If you want to drop in the chat your favorite part of those three days, um, as Les took you through the design cycle and as you heard from Googlers, let us know what your favorite part was. Um, and here's just a few key dates for New York. 
Again, uh, make sure you get that turned in by uh, midnight Eastern Standard Time, so 11.59 p.m. Those are all graded by uh, your innovators on the call here and other innovators from around the world, and they're really looking just for passion and direction with your challenge, um, and that you might be somebody who has a history of innovation who would do well with this community. Um, and then you can see here that you do want to be in person at Google New York. October 2nd through 4th. And then we have a midpoint meetup in March where we see how things are going online with your project. And then the goal to um, complete your project by a year later um, in 2020 and uh, showcase what you've done with your project. Let us know at any time if you have any questions around this timeline or the application requirements. And there's just a few more of the projects for some inspiration. Uh, let us know in the chat are you currently level one or level two certified? Um, and then facilitators, if you wouldn't mind dropping in the chat any tips you have for either studying for that or um, completing it. Uh, this requirement came about just a couple years ago, uh, back when we had our first academies a long time ago. It was a, a lot more about the tools because um, Google for Education had just been born, and um, these collaborative tools were also new to education. So the first few academies was a lot about how to use this in the classroom. Nowadays, we know that so many teachers are doing this on their own that we want to show your mastery before you come to Google New York so that you can really spend your time innovating and creating. Um, I will say if you're brand new to this, you just got this web webinar from somebody and you don't even know maybe what that is, um, what level two certification is. It is out here in the Google Teacher Center. And you can see there's lessons, there's practice exams, and then you can actually take the exam itself all in here. So we won't cover that today, but I will drop the link in. Let us know if you have any questions. It looks like a ton of people in the chat are already all of the above. Um, so that's wonderful. But if you haven't, you have plenty of time before August to, to get that wrapped up. Cool. All right, let's keep going if there isn't any other questions about that. Yay, Les, now we get to do our challenge workshop. So um, with that, I'll hand it over to Les who can talk to us a little bit about the design thinking uh, model that we use um, with Google for Education and, uh, and what phase we're in right now in this pre-academy part of it. Thanks, Wendy. Um, I didn't really introduce myself before because I thought I'd sort of give the story here of sort of how we, we got to this process that we use in the Innovator Academy. So I was in Mountain View 2016 um, with Maggie. At the time, I was a, a classroom teacher in a school in Toronto. Um, and I came to uh, teaching uh, about a decade ago from design. And I had been working in design um, for a company in New York City. And I started doing that with kids and saw the power of it. So when I applied for the Innovator Academy, my challenge was, um, how might we empower more educators to use design to help kids solve the world's big problems? Um, and that eventually, for me, I was really fortunate that my innovator project turned into a full-time job at Future Design School, where now we run professional development for uh, teachers, we run student programming, and we use design thinking in all sorts of different ways to help uh, sort of redesign the future of school, I guess you could say. So our school is not really a school, but we work with other schools. Um, and from that, we've we've sort of uh, used this design thinking process that you see on on your screen there um, of defining a problem, sketching out uh, multiple solutions, coming up with lots of potential ideas and ways to solve that problem, um, critiquing and getting feedback on those ideas, uh, creating prototypes and testing them. But you'll also notice that it's not really a one way cycle. Uh, there's a really great image that we use during the academy that shows this really nice circle that you see here. And then actually in reality, it's more like a scribble and things are all over the place. Um, but the whole the whole point of it really is this user centered um, focus of who is our problem and what it, or who is our user and what is their problem? And how can we really understand the problem from their perspective? So we've taken that process that we use at Future Design School and we've sort of meshed it with the Google um, process that they use to actually come up with real products and, and solutions. Um, 
And so similarly, when Google is developing products and um, they really practice this user-centered approach of really trying to understand um, who are their users and what are their needs, which is why they are always out looking for feedback and, and, uh, and information on their tools. If you ever hit that little feedback button in any of the Google products, someone actually reads that, listens to that, and tries to use that to drive their decision making. So when they're developing products, they use this same cycle of empathizing with the user, understanding their problem, ideating and iterating, prototyping, uh, testing out those ideas, and then launching those. And so the pro process that we use at the Innovator Academy really builds on, on these cycles of product development. And um, so what we're going to do uh, tonight is uh, think a little bit about what is that problem. Um, because we do want you to come with uh, challenges and not necessarily with solutions yet. Um, the, the purpose of the academy is to help you come up with all these ideas and really live in this process of, of trying to think of multiple different ways to, um, uh, to solve the problem based on the, that real user experience that you get. Um, so you'll notice um, uh, in the uh, application that that's what we ask you to do is to sort of um, think about um, an initial challenge that you see in education and why you think that challenge is important. Over the course of the next year, you'll go through this process. We'll sort of take you through a boot camp at the academy to come up with some initial ideas. And then you'll leave the academy with some ideas that you can go out and actually prototype. Um, and you'll have your mentor to help you work through that prototyping process. Uh, so we're really looking for sort of big thinkers and big ideas. Don't be afraid to uh, tackle those really big problems, but also um, making sure that it's something where you actually can speak to some people who are affected by the challenge. And it's not something that's uh, so far outside of your sort of um, realm that you wouldn't actually be able to develop that real empathy for people who are affected by the problem. Also, you only have 150 words to do all of that. So um, good luck. <laughs> that can be sometimes the most challenging part is just figuring out uh, how, how to succinctly say that. Um, so at Future Design School, we call this falling in love with the problem and not the solution. So thinking about at the beginning stages, really trying to understand that problem from multiple different perspectives, which is why we're not asking you to develop a solution yet, but really to just spend this time as you're developing your application, really trying to understand that problem. So tonight we're gonna come up with some ideas to help you um, think about how you're gonna come up, uh, solve that problem. Um, but I think first we're gonna flip it over to the um, facilitators. So if you guys wanna jump in the chat and um, and share uh, some little insights on sort of how you initially landed on your challenge. Was it a personal experience or was it something that you were encountering um, in your daily life? Uh, sort of where did that challenge uh, initially come from? And anyone, if anyone wants to jump in, you can also jump in live and share a little story. I like how Maggie uh, mentioned in the chat about finding a pain point. So, yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, have anything to share about finding the pain? The pain is everywhere every day. How did you find your pain, Maggie? Yeah, I was just putting in the chat that um, I really chose mine based on like kind of a pain point I felt like I was experiencing and I felt like a lot of my um, colleagues, mostly on Twitter, who I was connecting with virtually who are also really busy and trying to innovate in their schools, innovate in education. And we were in all these kind of extra spaces and um, engagements outside of school and that that could suck up tons of our time um, and energy and then kind of be draining at points. And so I felt like we needed to figure out a way to help bring some of that balance and help keep each other afloat when that got overwhelming. Awesome, thanks for sharing. Maggie, that's great. Um, I think that's often where it comes from, right? Is that personal experience um, and how that can can really move you forward. And it's actually a great lead into um, our little activity that we're gonna do tonight, um, which is uh, something that we're calling the Gripe Jam. Um, so the Gripe Jam uh, actually comes from uh, Jenny McGarra. If you don't know Jenny, she is an amazing educator um, and 
phenomenal speaker and has done really amazing work um, in schools in the Chicago area uh, in, in helping people to really be courageous in changing their schools and their culture. And so this activity that we're gonna do tonight comes from uh, Jenny's book called Courageous Adventures. Um, and we're going to use that idea of pain points. What are the things that sort of cause you pain or struggle in your day? Um, I used to do this with my students, I called it a bug book or I would have my students have a little notebook and they would write down all of the things that bugged them uh, that they would use um, that they would use then to inspire some of their uh, projects as they were working using design in the classroom. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, this little activity we called the we call the um, uh, gripe jam. And so um, we're going to show you um, in a moment here, we're going to put up a slide. And um, on that slide, uh, there will be a, a bit.ly link for you to join a slide deck. And we're gonna see how this goes because there's a lot of people on this call. So this is a bit of an experiment, but we believe in prototyping. And so <laughs> we're sort of prototyping this right now. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna jump into this slide deck uh, called the Gripe Jam. And um, then we're going to put up some prompts that are going to ask you about different times of the day and different situations. And you're gonna write down uh, your struggles. So for example, if um, the prompt was something like, um, you know, the first five minutes of your class, what is your struggle? For me, it would be like taking attendance. Um, and it wasn't that I wasn't good at taking attendance, so I, I would forget to take attendance every day. So that would be my struggle in the first five minutes of class. Um, or we might put up a prompt um, that says uh, something like, um, you know, during your planning time at school, what is your struggle? And so I might add in that my struggle is like finding common time to connect with other teachers. Uh, so you're just gonna, each person is essentially going to have their own slide in this massive deck. Uh, so you'll have to sort of self organize a little bit to find your own slide. There's about 150 slides in there. We can add more if we need them. Um, and then I'm gonna put up some prompts and we're just gonna brainstorm together, each person on your own slide, any challenges that you see. This doesn't have to be what you're gonna do for the innovator program. It doesn't have to be your project application. This is all just about sort of getting some ideas out there. So um, anything that comes to mind, we're not gonna sort of edit our ideas at the moment. So I think Wendy is gonna put that bit.ly link up there for everyone to be able to jump in. And Are we gonna break the slides, Les? Uh, we might break the slides. <laughs> <laughs> and How many uh, people can be in the slide deck at the same time? We're gonna find out right now. <laughs> so don't forget to stake your claim. If, if you see an aardvark in yours or a kiwi, just move on to the next one and type your name in at the top right away. Someone's already in yours, there's plenty. There's Adam, yay. We also have a prize for the most ideas today, the most challenges. So we'll give a co away a copy of uh, Jenny's book um, to someone who can amass the most. Um, and thanks for modeling your great digital citizenship practices in here too. And um, our coaches uh, on the call will be um, giving you some comments or feedback as well. So thanks facilitators. But wait for the prompt. So don't put your struggles in just yet. Les is going to guide you through our gripe struggle situations here in a moment. I'm curious to see how many different animals Google has as anonymous people. <laughs> yeah, we have 40. We have a pumpkin. I, I, I saw a jackalope in there. Is that even an animal? Dolores. <laughs> All right. You got to find the chupacabra in there. <laughs> <laughs> Which they, they have one. There's a chupacabra in there. So once you've found your slide, put your name on there at the top where it says your name so that people know that you've claimed that slide. Um, and then we'll walk you through the prompts that will help you to sort of brainstorm um, different ideas. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so um, our First um, challenge, again, sort of letting it all out. We're not gonna worry about editing ourselves at this point. Um, all the challenges we can think of in a day. So this is just a super rapid brainstorm. Um, and you're imagining that each of those are post-it notes. So this is an activity that we would normally do sort of analog with post-it notes, but we're uh, we're gonna make it work here with, uh, with our digital um, 
uh, approach. So again, one problem per digital post-it note. So imagine those little um, boxes are each a post-it note and don't sort of edit yourself. Anything is, is a good challenge right now. Is everyone ready for our first struggle situation? And Les, I'll put on, after you say it, I'll put 30 seconds on the timer. So come up uh, with as many as you can. And if you need to copy and paste those digital posties, you can, or make them smaller or get creative. But we'll also put some gripe jammy music on in the background to really let you let it all out. So our first one, Les, do you want to let her rip? It is? Right. It is, you just got to school. What are the challenges that you experience first thing in the morning? All right, your um, next challenge, you've wrapped those ones up. Um, you can add more post-it notes if you're running out, is your planning time. And facilitators, feel free to jump in and leave comments on people's challenges. So it's your planning time. All right, and our next uh, challenge is you need to meet with a family. So you've got some parents or some students or grandparents maybe that you need to meet with. Um, what are you going to do? What are some challenges? All right, time is up for that one. Our next challenge is you're supporting your colleagues. So we know a lot of you are in a role where you're supporting colleagues, your tech integrators, or you're um, working at a district level or as a coach in your school. What are some challenges? Even if you're that's not your formal role, you're probably informally supporting people. So share your challenges around that. And note, if it, if the side deck's being wonky, Theresa mentioned in the chat too, feel free to just write down on your own posties. This is just so the coaches can help see what some of your challenges are, but you totally can run this analog on your own too. All right, here we go. St starting the timer. All right, time's up for that one. And our next challenge is during a lesson. So you're teaching a lesson. What are some challenges that you might experience? If it's not working for you in the deck, just jump in the YouTube chat there and you can drop them in there and we'll also comment and respond back on, on there too. I think our next slide says, 
It's lunchtime. What are some challenges you might face during the breaks during the school day? Give you 30 seconds there for that one. All right, next up for our challenges, we have it's the end of the school day, at least the school day for the kids, but probably not the end of the school day for you. What is going on at the end of the school day? microwave line yes if somebody submits a challenge about the microwave line and how to solve it man totally exactly <laughs> true um, i also saw something about it's too cold to go outside at recess or after school i feel that one too all right we've got a couple more challenges um the school day is over and you've just gotten home what's your net what's your challenges when you're at home at the end of the day Exercise or ice cream. Santi needs to make an app called Exercise or Ice Cream. Maybe it's just a little <laughs> roulette. That <laughs> <laughs> Why does it always say ice cream? <laughs> it's, it's in the works. The app is in the works. <laughs> Hot dog or pizza? <laughs> All right. Our next challenge, speaking of things like exercise or ice cream, is it Sunday night? Everyone's favorite time of the week, Sunday night. What are some challenges you experience on a Sunday night? Yeah, finding quiet time to disconnect, family time, being present at home. I see a lot of similarities here. More ice cream problems from Santi. Laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go get more ice cream because I ate it all over the weekend. The struggle is real. <laughs> Um, well, Mackenzie, good that. point about a 24 seven being on and when you're going to be off. Oh, I love it. Yeah. All right. We've got a couple more left. So it's, you're about to begin a staff meeting. What are some challenges that you experience leading up to or during a staff meeting? Nobody brought ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Listening, Judy, totally. Just reading through the deck here, some great ideas, great challenges. Good snacks, Bonnie. Did I get everything ready for tomorrow? All right, and last but not least, it's the middle of the night and you just can't sleep. What, what is keeping you up in the middle of the night? I like the races sitting at home thinking about that blanket. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Daniel, your laptop just died. Totally. <laughs> You remembered you forgot to put away the ice cream, says Santi. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was someone else. That wasn't me. <laughs> Did I put the ice cream out? <laughs> All right. So we've got some, uh, some, so many challenges now. Everything from ice cream to finding time to, you know, have that balance to being able to support our colleagues effectively. Um, focusing in staff meet meetings, communicating with parents. There's so many different challenges out there. So we've got them all down. And now what we're going to do is um, walk you through a really quick protocol just in terms of how do you sort these ideas out and figure out which are the ones that you want to prioritize now that you've uh, generated a bunch of challenges. Um, so what we're going to have you do, and you might do this right now or you might do it afterwards because um, we've only got about 13 minutes left in our call here. Um, but we're going to ask you to think about sorting these post-it notes in a way that um, thinks that, has you think about sort of um, how frustrating this is to you um, and sort of how many people are affected by this. So sort of what's the severity of the problem in terms of the amount of frustration that it causes you or other educators? And then also, is this something that only you experience? Like, is everyone experiencing this challenge or is it just something that's localized in your school? Um, one of the things about your innovator pro projects is that it doesn't necessarily have to be something that everyone everywhere is experiencing, but you want your, your project to either be replicable, so something that other people can sort of take your learning that you've created from this project, um, and, and replicate it in other places, or something that you create that might be able to help other people solve that problem as well. So um, thinking about is it sort of scalable or replicable in other places will be part of sort of the, the process that you're gonna think about as you're developing your solutions. So what you're gonna do is sort of sort your post-it notes on this scale of let more frustrating things are gonna go over to your left and less frustrating things are gonna go over to the right, imagining that it is a continuum. And then once you've done that, you're gonna sort them sort of top to bottom, um, more people affected versus less people affected, the lower they would go. So if the deck wasn't working for you, you could certainly just sketch this out, or if like Theresa said, do it on your own posties, but a good way to visually help you identify, you know, what do you really care about? And as they're doing that less, I do, I was just doing a quick glance I don't know if the facilitators can help too, but I'm trying to visually see who had the most struggles to give them Jenny McGarrah's book to. I thought I saw Karen's with an inordinate amount of posties. That, that was my most so far. Did anybody see more than Karen's? I know some people weren't loading, so sorry about that if yours didn't load, but you can open this up later or make a copy of it. Oh, Hannah has a bunch too. Oh my goodness, Zach. So just as we're as you're sorting through that through these uh, these challenges, um, things to be thinking about in terms of your project. These challenges that we just sorted out here might not be what your project is, although maybe you did just sort of come up with an idea here that you realize this is actually a big problem that I want to try to address. Um, but what you want to start to do is focus on those things that are sort of more frustrating and affect more people. If you're struggling to figure out which of these challenges you want to land on. Um, that's just going to provide more opportunity to create a bigger change um, and have and have a bigger impact. At the same time, though, if your heart is like really attached to one of these ideas and you're like, actually, you know, what, it's really not that frustrating, but I feel like this could be something that a lot of people would really care about. You can also choose to do that. So this isn't like a sort of a, a, an exact formula necessarily for choosing your challenge, um, but just a, a way to help you start to generate ideas and sort through those ideas based on the number of people that could be affected and what the 
potential impact of your solution could be um, once you develop that solution. Um, so what we're going to ask you to do again in the application is to think about describing that challenge really succinctly and, and why you think it matters. And part of that is being able to explain sort of what is the frustration uh, that, or the pain point, like Maggie said, um, that, that this is causing and, um, and why, why is it so important that this, solves, uh, this problem is solved, which really goes back to that student impact piece, right? At the heart of all of our work, students are always going to be our end users. And so thinking about what could this impact potentially have on student learning or on the culture and the community in schools or um, those different areas that we know will really result in, in big transformations um, moving forward. And I see less Zach put, you know, if you're feeling, Zach, I was seeing some of your lengthy responses too, that, you know, if you have a lot of them, I think this grouping activity will probably help you at least see that they're very similar. And I know our innovators on the call probably know when they got to their academy, there's a, a few, three or four different big buckets that everyone's struggles kind of fall into. And so you might end up, you know, Chris, you brought up on the chat that so much was related to time, right? So these themes uh, will be a way that you can talk to other innovators, both, um, you know, at the academy and beyond about, um, you know, seeing what everyone's doing, collaborating and, and trying to solve those big ones. Um, and another thing I wanted to point out here too is um, at another sort of phrase that we use a lot in design thinking is that every challenge is an opportunity. And so we had you write down what are all these challenges and it wasn't to go down this sort of negative tunnel of there's so many problems, but rather to see every one of those problems as an opportunity for us to create some, some solution to that problem and really looking at it from that optimistic point of view of, of looking at uh, as struggles as opportunities for us to create amazing solutions to solve those problems. So um, think about those challenges in those ways as well as you're going through this and where do you think those opportunities lie um, within these themes that you may have uncovered now, or maybe you've already got some ideas in mind, um, or maybe it's about going and talking to other people, which is what we're going to talk about next. And maybe um, like while we're while you're talking about the interviews, if anyone wants to take their first shot, at it, part of this is al also committing to one. And uh, even if you change your mind later, that's totally okay. But go ahead and do your first shot at committing to something. You can see here um, in Jenny's um, slide here that um, she circled, you know, one that she might want to. So go ahead and at least put in the chat here while Les talks about interviews. Um, if you were to choose right today something that you would try to solve out of all of those that you did, um, put down put down that number one, that one that really stood out to you. It'd be cool to see what the the final the final solution uh, final take was on that. So we have a few minutes left, and um, once you've landed on what that that challenge is that you want to focus on, um, the next thing we're going to ask you to do as part of your application is to actually go out and interview um, someone. And in this case, we're we're saying one person. Ideally, you're going to talk to lots of people throughout this process, especially um, once you've been accepted to the, the the program. This is some of the lead up work that you'll be expected to do, but before you come to the academy, is to actually go out and interview multiple people um, to really try to develop that empathy and understand what that problem is from someone else's perspective. Because uh, sometimes what we think is the problem is not actually the challenge when you go out and talk to people that are that are living and breathing that problem every day, or maybe your challenge is slightly different than the person who's in the room next to you. Um, so what you're going to do is go out and interview one person. Um, and you're gonna try to uncover uh, insights about their challenges that they're experiencing through stories and emotions and insights. So it's not necessarily to have your user come up with solutions for you. You're really just trying to fall in love with that problem still and develop a real understanding of what their reality is. Um, it's not about sort of jumping to conclusions or, um, or giving them the solutions yet, but just really trying to live in that problem space right now and have a beginner's mindset of, of trying to really understand the problem. Um, so we've got a few tips here um, for interviews, but first we're gonna have you um, just jump in the chat there and say, you know, who are two or three people that you think might be affected by a challenge uh, that you'd be able to interview? Remember, you're trying to think of someone who's actually living and experiencing this problem. So if, you're, if your users are students, then maybe it's students. If your users are other administrators, maybe that's who you're looking at. Um, and facilitators, if you want to jump in and give ideas for uh, or feedback on that, uh, on who they might interview, that would be great.
So as you're doing that, we're just going to give you a few tips for interviews. Um, one of the things, uh, uh, interviewing can be a bit of an art and trying to figure out how to uncover those insights. People don't always want to tell you about their challenges at first, right? You People want to want to talk about the great things that they're doing. And it's, sometimes it can be hard to get people to open up and really be able to develop that understanding of what their challenges are. And so we have some tips here. The first one is to, to seek stories. So asking your users to tell me more. Tell me about a time when or um, can you explain uh, what happened next? What can you walk me through? You know, the first forty-five minutes of your day, um, and why do you think that 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 this is happening? Or, or what are some other ways where you see this challenge playing out? Try not to ask closed-ended questions, but ask those open-ended questions. Um, really try to get them to tell you stories. And as you're doing this, um, once you get into your to your user interviews before you come to the academy, especially, uh, try to think about ways that you can capture that without necessarily having to write down as you're speaking to them, because that makes the conversation sort of awkward. But could you potentially record this or have someone else take notes for you as you're having the conversation uh, so that you can really encourage that storytelling and make it feel like a sort of natural flowing conversation? You also want to encourage elaboration. So um, having them um, sort of just talk comfortably and it doesn't have to be like I'm interviewing you, making your user know that they don't need to have the right or wrong answer, but you're really just trying to develop that understanding um, as you go through the process. Um, so Wendy, if you just wanna flip ahead a couple slides there. Um, so we've got some sort of sample questions here that you might ask your users um, in order to, to complete the application. Um, ask them about a time when they felt um, a certain way, um, either as an individual or an organization when they felt innovative. Maybe ask them when they felt the opposite of that is a great way to sort of start to uncover some challenges. Um, you can ask them what are some roadblocks that they've experienced in the past. Um, Asking them, um, you know, what are some ways that they've seen people encourage um, experimentation? Um, what are some ways that uh, they've felt supported in the past are great ways um, to, um, to uh, phrase these questions? What are some systems or tools or processes that they've seen in other places? Uh, try to avoid asking questions that um, lead them towards a solution like, you don't necessarily want them to design uh, a solution for you. Um, and again, avoid those close-ended questions um, and, and think more about that storytelling piece. Um, Wendy, do we have time to do a little interview example or um, what's the... Yeah, yeah maybe, I think we'll go a couple minutes over if anyone on the um, panel needs to leave, but, and then maybe if I could, sorry, let me just boot forward. Um, oh, I thought I had one that, yeah, why don't you do a quick uh, interview example so someone could see, and then we'll, we'll save those other slides for our next webinar for sure. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna pick on Maggie here for a minute. Um, and uh, I'm gonna have, um, Maggie, how do you, would you like to me to interview you or do you wanna interview me about your project? Um, how I'll interview you. Okay, perfect. So um, Maggie told you a little bit about her project before. It was Project Buoy. I was actually one of Maggie's first users on her project, part of her beta testing. Um, so Maggie, maybe you just give a little context for your project and then imagine that you're, I was one of your potential users. Yeah, so I think I spoke a little bit about the context of, you know, just really busy innovators, right? So educators who are involved in Twitter chats, who are maybe running a couple of side projects, also really active at school and trying to create change in their culture there. Um, and so juggling a lot of different pieces while also trying to figure out maybe finding a mentor and staying balanced. Um, and so in doing getting the project going, it was really talking to a lot of different educators who were in different positions and feeling stresses in different levels. So I think I might ask, you know, you less something like, can you tell me about a time when you felt really stressed at school? Yeah. Um... I guess I would say maybe like this morning when I got to school and um, I realized that I was having this challenge with a, um, a family member of one of my students and I didn't feel like anyone else in my, in my department really understood what my challenge was. They weren't really very supportive. So that would be like an example answer. <laughs> Yeah, and usually, right, I'd want to follow that up with, and you know, and why do you think that was happening, or um, tell me more about that, and just really trying to understand what her experience was like. Um, and I found that, you know, it, at first it can be easy to want to understand, like, 
you know, why don't you have balance? You're asking questions that you think you might know the answer to with your, your challenge. And instead, just really pulling back and saying, let me find out, do they even have this challenge? And what's it like for them specifically? Yeah, that's a really great, um, a really great insight and really great point about the idea that um, figuring out do they actually have the challenge that you think that they have, right? And sometimes, like I said, what we think is the challenge is not actually the challenge. And, um, and that stepping back of taking the beginner's mindset of not assuming that you already know what they're going to say, but really trying to listen to what they're saying, um, which I know you're very skilled at. So thank you. Sure. Awesome. And did any of the other facilitators have any thoughts around uh, interviewing users? And I'm seeing the chat a lot of people, I think when you think about it, there's so many people who are affected by higher challenge. challenge. So it can be a little overwhelming, right? right? It can be teachers and students. Um, I wonder if, if you're trying to focus and thinking of who might might talk to a head or even like the modality that you might interview them. Does anyone else um, on the call want to share about uh, interviewing the user? I would just say that for me, the user was originally my family or my son. I don't know if the feedback is with me too. Is that bad feedback? Um, but it, uh, that's better. Okay, good. Um, but I, I really realized um, down the road, the more I thought about it, the difference in users. So I think having that, I like that beginner's mindset is really appropriate and applicable. So I really appreciate that. Um, the concept less. Awesome. Thanks, Judy. Um, and, and like I said, this is a, this first interview that you're going to do um, is really just the beginning of, um, of talking to your users and you'll continue to talk to your users throughout the process, um, really trying to develop that ongoing understanding. And that's also a really important part as you develop your prototype, right? Is taking your ideas back out to your users and getting that feedback and using that feedback to guide um, how, how your project develops. Um, and we know that innovation, you know, comes out of out of collaboration, and it can't happen in a vacuum. So the more that you get a chance to talk to your users throughout the process, um, that's what you'll find will help to lead you to success. Uh, you'll sometimes hear um, user centered design or human centered design used as sort of a, a synonym for design thinking. So it's always about keeping that user uh, at the heart of your problem. Um, so just to um, close out we're gonna we're gonna have another webinar um on june the 5th at 4 p.m pacific 7 p.m eastern um and during that interview we're gonna go through this idea of creating a how might we question that you'll use for part of your application so thinking about how you're gonna take this information from those interviews and frame a problem in a really effective way um, by creating point of view statements and then uh, from that, you will uh, create a how might we statement that you'll use as part of your application. Uh, during that next Hangout, we will also be going over the video component. So thinking about um, how do we, um, how do you create a really inspiring and awesome video? Uh, we'll show some examples, and I think we'll probably drop some examples into the chat here as well of uh, uh, videos that are really thinking about that falling in love with the problem and and uh, and being open to lots of potential solutions. So um, if you're free on uh, June 5th, mark your calendars. And um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, I think you found us all on Twitter now, probably. So um, feel free to reach out. Um, We'll also be um, giving away uh, a couple of copies of the book um, to uh, Kim Matina and uh, Karen for the most struggles. So those are our two winners. So uh, Kim and Karen, if you are still on the call, um, email info at certifiedinnovators.com um, with your address and we will get those books out to you in the mail. Um, I want to say thanks to all of our amazing facilitators. Uh, every person on the call here tonight uh, has, you know, done exceptional things um, with their projects and in their daily work. Um, and uh, we're so lucky to have you guys as part of the community. So thanks so much for spending the time tonight to give some advice to some potential new 
um, applicants. And uh, thank you to everyone else tonight uh, for coming. We really appreciate you spending your hour with us this evening. And we hope that this started uh, uh, some ideas flowing for what your projects could be and gave you a better sense of uh, what the application process looks like. Um, I think that's all. Uh, so we'll probably end the call there. But if you just want to jump in with any last words or any questions you've got there uh, in the video chat, um, we're happy to jump in and answer those. You can also send any questions at any time to info at certifiedinnovators.com. And, um, and we'd be happy to answer those questions. Thanks, everyone, for coming tonight. Well, uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy turned into a robot. What happened? Ice cream robot. Ice cream robot. Wait, wait, wait. Rescue a robot for us. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys.